So in part one, we got up until this point, okay? Uh, and uh, we saved everything here. Uh, so I wanted to go and open your um, file and bring it up like this onto the screen again. We're working in metric. And the last thing that we did was we ended up making the last duplicated square uh, we're working in metric, so 106, I think it was. I click on it and go read it. Yeah, 106 millimetres in width and height. And we turned that into a blanket stitch, which we said the spacing was 2.50, and the width or the bite of the stitch we put at 2 millimetres. Okay? Uh, so that's where we were. So I'm clicking off of that now, and now we're going to start for real doing the lace work. Now, um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to get my ruler out a minute because although this is in um, metric now, I am looking at, I'm still going to be looking actually at the blue square. So if I, if I first of all, I'm going to put a marker, which has come right down the middle here. I just put a marker. So from, although I can't see it very well, I don't know why, but um, because now I need to draw a, a semicircle that is not quite as big as that. So I'm going to bring it up nice and big, uh, so I'm heading, I, I need to have a little gap here, a little gap here, but I'm going to bring up uh, Digitize, and I'm going to be doing it in brown, um, and I'm going to digitise a circle to start with, okay? And it... Oh, come on, you little bum bum. If I hold down shift, no, it's not helping me. More or less a perfect circle as I can make it, yeah? Whoops. Oh, escape off of that one. Go to select and move that circle. I don't mind that it's... Um, I don't mind that it, it, that it, it it's, it's full at the moment and I want to bring this over this area okay and put the halfway line so we know the halfway line is actually I want it on the blue line yeah okay and then holding shift and taking the corners I want to just you see how I'm just bringing that circle out to practically the end of the, our stitch line I'm talking about the blue stitch line now and I'm going to move it over with my arrow keys away from the edge of that st stitch line oh, I'm going too far now two taps back yeah two taps back right now i'm just going to use this as a point of reference and then i'm going to get rid of it so now uh let's let's uh highlight that circle and take it and make it um let's just make it white so it's easy to see yeah then i'm going to go to digitized uh close shape as an outline and it should outline in a single run okay and I am going to just draw now, <coughs> starting in this at this point on that blue line. I'm using the circle. And, oops. Uh, left click for a straight line, and then click enter to line it up so now i've made a semicircle i can click on that white big circle and hit delete it's gone so now you can see i got a perfect semicircle if i move it away see i don't know why that line hasn't it doesn't know why why does that line i was doing it was i doing it in open shape i'm oh let me undo, undo a minute. 
closed shape, outline, single line, in brown. Let me just do that again. Starting on the, the white, following around the circumference. So I get down to the blue line and then left clicking and hitting enter to join it up. Now I can, whoops, escaping. Now I can hit on the white circle and delete. Yeah, I must have been using an open line. So now I've got a closed line so you can see that that's a closed shape. Okay. And it's a little, little tiny bit off. So I am going to click it again to get the white turning handles. Yeah. And I just slightly, ooh, too much. Got to be very gentle with this. There. Mm. Either one or the other. There. So now it's sitting on that blue line. So I am, am I happy with where it is? Uh, I think I could go a little more to the left. Yeah, I think that's about right. Because uh, sooner or later, we are going, we, we need a bit of um, width here for the width of the satin stitch that we're going to be using eventually. Okay. So that's, that's the first stage, is to get that the initial shape that we want, which is a semicircle. It's quite important to get this first part correct because once we got the first element correct, then we're going to be duplicating it and duplicating it. So we just spend some time making sure that the thing that we're going to duplicate is correct in the first place. All right. Um, so uh, what I need to do now is click on that element we've just put in, that brown semicircle, and we're going to tell it now to be, uh, uh, sorry, we're going to duplicate it. Right click and uh, duplicate. So now we've got two. And we're going to tell it to be a fill. All right. But we're going to make it, I'm going to use a tatami stitch. I'm going to tell it to be three millimetres apart. I'm going to tell the stitch length to be uh, 2.5. Okay. And I am going to go over to the stitching tab and say I don't want uh, the underlying tatami underlay. I just want the edge run uh, tatami, uh, the edge run underlay. Okay, can you see what that's done to our shape? So, we did a tatami fill, we put the spacing at 3mm, the length at 2.5mm, and we took off the second part of the underlay to give us nice clean lines that are working. If we go to stitching, we can see that they are at, is it on this one? Where's the stitch angle? They're at 15 degrees. I want to change that 15 degrees to being 45 degrees. Okay, so now you can see it's made a difference on the angle of the stitch, you know, on the on the program. I want to keep I want to see my work clearly. So what I really want to do is to hide that um blanket stitch line. So I'm going to click on the blanket stitch line, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say hide selected. Now it's still there but it's out of sight which means that we can see where we're positioning this lace a bit clearer. We'll bring it back into view later on. So uh, with the second one he highlighted and we've changed it to 45 degrees, I want you to go reshape and this is what I wanted to show you. Can you see that I've got a, a, a green triangle and a red cross? Now, green triangle means that's where it starts and uh, 
the red cross means that's where it finishes. So for the moment, it's all in the same place, yeah? I just want you to, to realise what those symbols meant. Now, I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to duplicate that again. So now I've got, this, got it twice in the same place. But with the second one highlighted, I am looking under stitching, I am looking for where the angle is, and instead of being 45 degrees, I'm going to change that to 135 degrees. Now you can see that that has made uh, the angle go in, in 90 degrees the opposite way. So now you can see I've made a hash, a crisscross hash. Now with the second one selected, I'm going to reshape. And I can see yet again, that has stopped and started back on the right hand side, which is where I wanted it. Okay, so I'm happy about that. Now the next thing I want to do, so in my sequence so far, I've drawn a semicircle once. I filled it in with tatami in both directions. Okay, now I just want to take up and digitise an open shape, which is basically a straight line. And uh, I want to just digitise from that last stitch point, we know it finished there, I want to digitise to about the same width the other side. OK, and hit enter. So I've just made a little stitch line which is going to connect the two pieces. So it's hopefully instead of the machine um, cutting a stitch and reattaching, it will just continue on without stopping because it's all in the same colour. The next thing we want to do is we want to take those three shapes that we just made and holding shift highlight the three right clicking and grouping so now they're all going to move in one um, place yeah and then duplicate those three one more time which will have come down underneath that little stitch line that we made yeah so now with the with the bottom three uh, highlighted we can move the entire thing over okay and i'm trying to place it so it's equal distance both ends and is really you know joining on to uh, that little line that we made in the first place so i click off that so now as you can see we've got two bits of, of stitching going on yeah we've got two bits so far to our lace work done so now uh, having got those two pieces set where we want it yeah, uh, I am going to go and highlight from the top and holding down shift, highlight absolutely everything we've just done in brown. And I'm going to group that together and I'm going to duplicate that. So I duplicated the whole thing, which has now come down underneath. Now, you know, this may get a bit confusing, so watch your lines. Uh, watch what you're doing so this is that uh six and the line in between uh, grouped together and then duplicated so now we got we know we got two sets on screen and i am going to ask it to turn and using the 15 degree button at the top i want it to turn 90 degrees so that's six hits one two three four five six that's a 90 degree turn okay i'm going to highlight the whole thing and i am going to for a moment because i can't see very much i am just going to scroll out and look at where i've placed it and i need to see the, the bottom as well <laughs> i need to be a little bit smaller because i need to see the bottom as well as the top so if i just hit naught that'll bring it up in sight right and so well, I, I was quite lucky there as you can see i have placed it more or less in the right place haven't i i could perhaps come over a tad that's it i've placed it where i want it to be 
So I'm going to hit save on that. Okay. Now, before we get uh, any more confused, just let my machine save it a moment. I want to go and do digitize <coughs> an open shape, which is basically just a line. I'm bringing it up nice and big from the exit point of that first set. I'm just around the corner to the second set and hit enter. So I've just made a trailing line, okay? And that trailing line is going to be at the bottom because it's the last thing I did. So I'm going to highlight that and I want to move it up above that sideways set. So it's got to come, it's got to come between ooh, uh, the horizontal set and the sideways set. So it's got to go above that first horizontal, you see? So I put the line in there, so now it's sewing in sequence. Right. Got me? I am going to continue duplicating and turning these sets um, and remembering to put the little corner line in between the turns so that uh, in sequence those little corner lines split between each um, incremented turned uh, piece until we end up with all four sides covered with the um, lace semicircles. Now the next thing I want to do is to do some loops around these semicircles. Uh, um, they don't want to be too big but they don't want to be too small either and I think the best way for us to do that is digitize an open shape uh, in a single run to start with and really are we are going to work from I so we're going to start uh, if I bring it up nice and big we're going to start from this corner here and that that was a, 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 a left click then we're going to do a right click and then we're going to come in just over that stitching and do a right click. You see how that's made a nice curly whirly, yeah? So from there we're gonna do a left click and back into the stitching as a right click. And again, same thing. But when it comes to this little bit, I don't want it to go too, too far. This is gonna be a bit of a slim one. right because if, if you can see what i'm saying if i just hit enter now right because if you can see what i'm saying i don't want i don't you know i don't want them crisscrossing over so that's a bit of a slim one now having made those semicircles as you saw i did by eye uh i can then um oops escape from it go down because it'd be the last thing that we did pick it up highlight it and go to reshape so if there's anything in particular that i didn't like like i i did feel that that uh, little arc was perhaps a little bit too big i can modify that one and that one yeah and uh, let's bring that one around uh, well yeah you see i don't want it to be too fat yeah and i could take that square and move it slightly take that square and move it slightly so that that semicircle is more in the middle and I still feel that that one is maybe a bit too big there now uh, if I click off it go to select and click off it now I feel that that's, that's probably more in keeping so you can play around moving these things until you're happy with them now uh what we need to do now is uh 
again, click on the whole thing, duplicate it, so now we've got two, but I want to move it to being on the next semicircle over, but I want the slim side to still stay in the middle, so I need to mirror it uh, on the X um, thing, yeah? Grab hold of it. I am moving the right one. Yes, I am. Grab hold of it. And then place it. Looking at all my variables, all my points are touching. Definitely touching because we, we need this to, to, to hold on to the... Um, yeah, we need it to attach itself to the lace work. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So uh, I could scoot it one point to the left, uh, maybe one point up. Right, happy with that. And so then with the first one that we know is right, Duplicate that, move it out of the way, and uh, again, six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know we've got it nice and uh, perpendicular, and we know it will fit, hopefully, on this one. I'm just trying to get it up so I can see. Yep, that's great. So the next one that we need to do in our sewing sequence is this one. So we can take that one, duplicate it, and turn that six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then bring that down. Because we know that these are mirrored opposites now anyway, don't we? So bring that down and make sure that it's nicely attached to all that. And just as we did previously with the lace uh, semicircles, we can uh, take them in turn, uh, remembering you've got mirrored pairs, but take, you know, one at a time and turn them around and attach to the semicircles that we've already laid down. Everything we've done so far to do with this lace work has been done in single stitch, okay? Now we're going to start doing things in satin stitch. Um, so we're going to change colours for it. Because it makes it easier for our uh, own reference of knowing uh, where we are within the stitch out and also a colour stop means it gives your machine time to pause uh, before it continues. Uh, not, I mean it's all going to be the same colour but it's, 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 it's like just putting a pause in for you as well at the same time. So I am going to start again up here and take that first uh, single stitch line that we did and duplicate it and while it's in position and highlighted, I'm going to change it to bright pink, okay, and I am going uh, back to uh, the outline and telling it to be a satin stitch. I'm going to go to manual spacing and I'm going to switch that up to 99 millimeters um, on the spacing of how close together the stitches are. So having done that, you can see on the screen it's opened up those stitches a bit, which is what I wanted. I want those stitches to be less jam-packed tight together, okay? So, and then we're just going to work around, doing exactly the same thing, highlight, duplicate, while it's um, highlighted, Turn it to pink, turn it to satin, 
and then change the manual spacing to 99 to open it up. Can you see uh, how I'm working around this now? So, and now you can see why I needed that gap so that they weren't too overlocked between each other. So I'm going to continue on now and go around and do exactly the same thing. Highlight this one, duplicate it, tell it to be pink, and tell it to be satin stitch, and then manual spacing, open it up to be 0 0.99, hit enter. Okay, so I'm going to go around now and just and, and finish that off. Now our picture looks like this. Okay, uh, I'm going to go and uh, say digitize a uh, close shape, I think. Yeah, a close shape now. In an outline, in that pink because I want these things to be in pink, these bits. I want it to be a satin line. I'm setting this up beforehand now. Uh, 2.50, and mine has moved over to being 99 millimetres because that's what I just used. So I'm happy that it's going to do it. it, it, it uh, 99, 99 millimetre manual spacing and width 2.50. So... Um, if yours does not say that, then you would need to adjust it. Mine does, because it, it hatch tends to use the last settings that you were using if you're continuing with the same stitch. So again, I'm going to start up here. And this time, I'm going to make it nice and big. This time, I am drawing a line. It is a closed shape, but it is an outline shape. So I am just literally you're going to digitize using left and right clicks so they are right clicks on a curve left clicks on a corner so left click there left click there and then right clicks it will move with you okay and I'm deliberately going across uh, stitchings so I am going to encompass it within uh, the work that I'm doing now. Okay. So I'm making sure I'm staying on my outside edge of that brown semicircle. Oops, that's a bit far. If you go too far, hit... Um, back arrow oh. gosh my hands are not working properly tonight As we're doing this, uh, if you do sort of like jump away from where you intended it to go, uh, you can still continue uh, to lay down the rest of the points because you can always go to reshape and bring those points back into line after we finished this, the whole thing. Okay. Well, where did I start? I think it was up there. So I'm going to hit enter. Right, there we go. Okay. Yeah, well, now you see, I don't think it did. It, I think it told me porkies. I'm going to bring that up. No, you see, I know, that looks to me as if that is too close up. It told me porkies and I am going to go and adjust the manual spacing to 99. 
there that's better is it that's what we were expecting that's much nicer okay so that's tied all those all those uh, pieces in all right now the next thing i want to do uh before we do, well we've got two steps to do now <laughs> we're all a go-go right uh so i'm gonna change my color now let me just stop for a second now the other element i want to bring into this is uh i want some sort of little uh, individual item in the middle okay so i think what i'll do is i'll go over to standard shapes and come find there's a heart in here somewhere isn't there there he is h pick up the heart and say okay and just over to one side click and bring it up to be in oh i don't know let me think about the size i want it yeah and it happens to have gone in satin because that's what we were just using all right so uh as that has gone into satin i'm going to change the color uh and I'm going to make this uh, cream. Highlight it, make it cream. All right. And uh, I'm also going to, I might as well do it all at once. I'm going to go over to the uh, outline and say, well, I want your space in. This time, I don't want it 99. I want it to be a little bit more closed up. So I'm going to say 0.70. Okay. 0.70. Uh and i'm gonna have a quick look at the stitching out a center run okay that's fine underlay one is a center one i'm happy with that now uh all right um i'm gonna i'm gonna duplicate it all right so i got two now right so i got one to, i got one to, to work with and one to play with and i'm gonna bring it across and I'm going to kind of centralise it and bring it up a tad from that bottom line and say, hmm, yeah, I think that's about the middle. So again, I'm going to go to my original, duplicate it and place it roughly the same place. When I get it there, if I don't like where it is, I can use my uh, lines, duplicate it. Oh, you may notice I'm using a couple of ways of duplicating. Uh, I'm right clicking in it in duplicate here, but you also have duplicate up there. Okay, so um, you know, and again, here we go one, two, three, four, five, six to so turn the darn thing round. Now, uh, I'm a bit too far and too high. I think, is that about right? I think so. Duplicate. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. To the right. And plonk it in the middle of this one. And I, I am literally doing this by eye. I think it could go. I think it could go one that more that way. Okay. And uh, duplicate it. And this time I want it to go up the other way so I can simply mirror it. Top to bottom mirror. Yeah? And say, okay. Let's come down there then. Plonk it in. Oh, I don't want it to do that one next, do I? I want it to do this one next. What are you thinking of, girl? Yeah. And again. Mirror it. Ooh. Undo. Uh, I need to duplicate it. Why mirror it? 
Donkey Inn. Now I'm happy with that. Uh, highlight, duplicate. And this time I go in the other way to the left by six. And the last one, well, I don't need any more, so five, four, five, six. Oh, I can't count. Okay, and plop that one in. Uh, might be a tad out. Oh, that's about right. That's about right. Okay, so there we are. So, and save my work. So now I put on these hearts. And as I say, I do them in different colours. Uh, a, so that it helps us when we're running up and down our um, sequencing bar to know where we are. And also, it is a colour stop, so it will stop the machine because it thinks you're going to change colour, even though we're not. We're going to do all of this in cream or white or, well, you can do any colour you like, but it's all going to be one colour. But it's going to be shown on the machine as different colours to give us that little bit of breath so that, you know, uh, in case we need to change the bobbin, in case, you know, uh, just to give us that little pause so we, it's not running on uh, without any halts so that we do have time to think about things as it goes. Uh, so that's that. And the very last thing that we want to do is the uh, final stitch. So again, we're going to come over and I'm going to change colour on this as well. And I've got a little Caribbean bloom now, right? Um digitize uh, close shape in satin it won't let me move the space in but I am going to move up to 3.5 degrees at uh, 3.5 millimeters now because uh, I want this last one to be a thick one which is really tying the lace work onto our um, underneath embroidery square all right so uh starting uh in the corner and i want this to be nice and square so from one corner to another corner And back up right so there we have it there's our final stitch which is uh, no it's not let's go and pick it up pick it up and say no I wanted that 3.5 right so it's bigger and I want it to be the uh, spacing on it I do want it to still be 99 is enough 99 is enough all right and i'm going to just highlight that again and go and look at the, at the underlay it's a center run that's fine by me which means it probably be two rows of, of center but there's plenty underneath it to give it the stability uh, of what we've just of what we've done with the other so that basically is the end of our artwork that that is the end of uh I'll stitch out. We're ready to go. Okay? Ah, but I forgot to tell you to go back up to where we hid the uh, blanket stitch and unhide it. I forgot to tell you that bit. So now it's time to hoop up. Oh, let's, let's, yeah, let's talk about hoops. Okay, so how big did it end up? That's a four inch hoop. Didn't quite get there, did it? So the next biggest thing I got on my machine is let's try the five by seven no not going to quite work on that one so i'm going to have to come down to my eight inch square if you've got a six by eight or a six by six that's fine i haven't so my next larger square is the eight okay and as you can see i can tell by my arrow it's beautifully aligned in the center of that i can tell by my rulers yeah um so there it is ready to go save uh, now you need to export it 
I will export it as a JPX file for my Janome machine. Um, you uh, can export it as a PES or whatever machine that you're using. Onto your USB drive, ready to put in your machine, ready to stitch out. And just remember, this, these different colours are for our benefit. The lace work is all going to be whatever colour you decided to do. All right.